Turns out, apparently we've made a bit of a clangor. Hello, good morning, and welcome from a sunny May morning. And after all the rain we've had, it's quite a joy to see the sunshine beaming down. Now it's festival season, and as is typically the case with festivals, people travel far and wide, meet up, and then, of course, don't necessarily want to go straight home again. Now our northern friends, who are still in convoy, have decided that having not stayed at Stonehenge, they would like to en route to Cornwall. Being the obliging type of fellow I am, I says, I'll go to Cornwall with you. So that's what we're doing. That was another good night's stay. Safe, secure, welcoming. That's all you need, isn't it? Now, having checked the weather, we're going to make a beeline down to Newquay and then we'll work our way out from there according to where the sun is and the, uh, the rain isn't, more importantly. Might be a little bit of a change of plan. The weather keeps raining, the directions are changing. Jenny's been on the old walkie talkie, but she's in charge of navigation and weather control. So, we're going to turn around and go to that services if we can. I don't know where we're going to turn now. So, I think we're now going to bypass Newquay and we keep reading about a car park near Tintagenal. It was at the services, see if they've got water, but it looked like it was just an SO. All right, should we go forward and then spin around somewhere? Right, so, as I was saying, there's a car park in, Tin, in Tintagel, Tintagel, that place. Now, although we've been to the castle, I keep reading good reports about this car park. So let's go and check that out, because if any of you guys are going to come down in the height of summer, this could be a reasonable base. So we'll do the homework for you. Looks like a wicked job he's got. How happy does he look? He does the thing. Total job satisfaction. There's nothing that will show you the steepness of this hill apart from Nick's moaning. And this is on the way down. That's the funny thing. We're going down. This is the easy bit. I mean, literally, momentum takes you. You wait till we try and get him up. But I think it's a given we're going to have to get the Land Rover back up. Either that or an ambulance. <laughs> but that is what we're going to do. Now, Lindsay and I did it last time. On the way down, stupidly enough, and walked up because we're hard. Now, the thing is, every time we've been here, the tide has been in, and we haven't been able to get to Merlin's Cave. Now, I'm hoping that this time, the tide is just out enough that we get inside. That's the plan, fingers crossed. Right, now, there's a little bit of discrepancy as to which cave is which, but we're gonna go with the one down here, someone was just saying. Oh. Blinking windy. <laughs> There's blinking so many caves here. I mean, given it, it's all legend anyway, I suppose you just make up what you like. All right, we've seen it. <laughs> well, we will have by the time we see a couple more. I'm not sure.
moving away from the castle because that's not actually why we're here. If you want to see a video on that, there's, there's others in our section on Cornwall with that Tintagel castle in it. Um, we're kind of here to review this car park, this camping situation. The good, the bad, the ugly. Good news is there is a fish and chip shop just at the entrance. The other good thing is it's not just a car park. You'll see that way you've got the, the hard standing, but this side is all grass for up to 15 vans. There's probably 30 plus spaces, but they're only, a, must have permission for 15 vans. So you know you're gonna get spaces between you. This is all good. This is a fiver, five pound between five o'clock in the afternoon through till 10 o'clock tomorrow morning. So real casual getting up time for a fiver overnight. This is good. The bad, and I don't know whether this is gonna be the same in the summer, but the bad for us tonight is you are shown the temptation of at least a port -a like it or not, it's a port -a so better than nothing. However, it's a bleeding lock on it, isn't there? So either that loo ain't here for the use of the campers, maybe it's for workers or something that's here during the day. Tap as well. Could say that's a good thing. However, the bad is, I ain't switched on, is it? Again, maybe that'll change in the summer, I don't know. So anyways, that's the field of dreams at the back. That's the hard standing car park. There's pubs, there's fish and chips, and it is, Generally speaking, real lovely village. We've had a little drink in the pub earlier on today as well. So if you want the facilities, if that loo remains closed or disappears, there is a public loo just outside of the car park, the other side of the street. There are loos there as well. Plus, of course, you've got the pubs, which I guess you could go in and use anyway. So that's the review. It ain't a campsite, so it is no frills and it is only a fiver. We're happy with that. Well, that was definitely worth five quid, without a shadow of a doubt. Just got to go and try and find a bin now and catch up with the others. Radio check. Whoop. Yeah, we're on. Did you find a bin? Yeah, we just did the wrong way. We didn't get it. It's a shame we got rain again this morning. So much for British spring and summertime. This is pants. But I don't know if we're going to give up on sightseeing today and maybe just accept it could be a park at Fistral, walk into Newquay for a bit of a commercial shop up. Are you ready to go, Randy, or do you need to Actually, I've got nothing too smelly on board, so I'll just carry on, mate. So I managed to have a bath this morning, <laughs> kind of. <laughs> I often, obviously you body wash at the sink or you have the little shower outside when the weather is appropriate, but uh, I've really, uh, I'm just dead keen to have a bath or a shower and it's just the only option was to try sitting in the sink. I didn't realise how fat my ass is, but anyway, it worked after a fashion. But I do genuinely, I do genuinely feel clean. So that's well worth it. Because I had quite a lot of water on board as well from yesterday's fill up. So that, that was the golden opportunity. It was then or never. So just while we're killing time on a wet drive to Newquay, just saw a sign to David Stowe, airfield now i haven't stayed there for a year year and a half maybe slightly longer it used to be a wicked park up on an old airfield potentially thousands of spaces but you can just go and lose yourself anywhere in the area we used to have loads of fun there getting mixed messages really as to whether that's still a an ongoing park up so if anyone does know the facts behind that one that's still worth an overnight shot or whether it is true that's that's another one that's gone uh, let me know in the comments because I'd love a revisit after an amazing night there uh, once. That's actually where uh, Lindsay and I got engaged. We just had the time of our lives. It was just one of those magical moments on a Cornwall road trip where all the stars were aligned. We had the best time, the best fire. So that's where I went down on one knee and popped the question. It was that good of a perfect moment. Sadly, just don't know if that one's worth the risk anymore. Yeah, you're making me all mucky. I can see the sun up ahead anyway, look. Yeah, I told you. Okay, good. <laughs> Just parked up. Now look at the colour of the sea.
See this? Blue sky up there, hour down the coastline. Jenny the weather girl. <laughs> got it right, didn't I? Yeah, I've got to give it to her. Yeah, we've been talking and we've walked for ages to find somewhere to stop for a fry up, which we've been busting for. How beige, how beige does that look? Oops, I think we chose the wrong place. That was about as beige to taste as it was to look at. Copy beans, copy sauces, none of the high end stuff. I saw this when passing. Size of that pasty. It's bigger than your head. So we've done the commercial bit in Newquay. Turns out apparently we've made a bit of a clangor because we've come here en route to Perrinpore thinking that uh, there's a good park up there that these guys had used before. But turns out there is Tunes in the Dunes, quite a big festival down here and all the park ups, you got no hope. Campsites booked up and they're kind of laughing at us saying, uh, you're kidding aren't you? Should have booked up like months ago. So we're in the wrong area now for wild camping or camping, glamping, whatever you want to pay for. Unless we can find a farmer's field, we might need to get out of this area completely. Right, so we've made a decision. We're going to take our chances with a couple of overnight spots that we've checked on Park for Night that are still in the Perrinporth area. So we might be having a laugh to think we're going to get anything, but let's give it a whirl. It's still only Thursday. So if everyone is going to be down here for this weekend, it might still be on the edge of early enough to get away with something. Not so bad, sometimes you just gotta make do without a view. But, well, there's a bloody good view, it's just not on the beach. That'll do, won't it, Blue, eh? Right, let's go and show you around. We've got our parking spaces around here. That's Luna, doing the barky bit. Now apparently, according to the lady that just parked opposite, there's a lovely good view of the sea behind me this way. So far so good. It's pretty damn peaceful as well. Ah, here we go. Would you look at that? And that'll be Perimbulf over yonder. Which is nice. All right, let's go and settle in. Can't get the van out. Might be beer o'clock and all. The seals we're settled now here for the night. Nick's got a problem that he's got really squeaky brakes. So we're gonna have to get this wheel off and have a little look. Well, he's gonna get the wheel off. Another guy in the car park's gonna have a little look. That's probably more realistic. Now my input into this is the fact that when I went to Lidl to get some brownies, you had the middle aisle where there's always toot to have a look at. Impact driver, 69 quid. Shall I get that? You can turn that out if you want on there. Look at that wheel arch gap, it looks like a four by four, doesn't it? It does. That looks really cool. Oh, there you go, it's coming up now. The official ruling is that that ain't a problem on that side. And short of doing every single one, bore off, it might be time just to roll it into quick fit and get someone else to do it. So how long have you been a mechanic for then? Since I was 16. There you go, look, that's how it's done. <laughs> it's that it's that balancing foot at the bottom look. That's what you didn't use. Whoa. 
Very quick one. Mm. Oh, it's a bit of fun, isn't it? Right, whilst we're being manly and doing geezer stuff, I've got a wiring problem with my fairy lights. That don't sound right, does it? That's what I'm after. Wire cutters. Are we man enough to mend the fairy lights? Yes! Look at that! We've done it! We've done it, Blue! Whilst we've been doing the chores... Look what Nick's been doing. Preparing dinner. Chicken curry. So Nick, being a super bloke, is making dinner for everyone, including the guy who's car camping next to us. In true van life community spirit. Good morning. Summer's arrived today. It is proper warm, proper warm from dawn sort of temperatures. Lovely it is. So we need to make some decisions because Jenny and Nick have still got an issue with their brakes. It's not dangerous, but it is something they need to start traveling north to get remedied um, early next week. So it's whether we travel towards Devon or hang around in Cornwall because it's just like summer. Decisions, decisions. To be honest, I don't really care. Sun's out. Cheers, angels, for the sunshine. Okay, so update, we have totally lucked out. Just driving past the local petrol station, they've got a car park, not particularly desirable in terms of views, but it's a car park nevertheless, and in a town that is about to be mobbed by thousands of extra people for this festival. In addition, the good bit, they've got a paddock behind the petrol station, which not only allows for daytime parking for the bigger vehicles, they allow overnight parking site as well. I think it's £10 a day, £10 a night. However, we'd like to out even further, and let us have a job lot 16 quid. And this is pretty much like Bethlehem at Christmas. There ain't no rooms in the inn. And yet here we are. Now we're excited because what with it being breakfast time down here, it's pasty time all round. I think there's a, a common verdict that we've got to do the Cornish pasty. And today is the day. And one of the local ladies down the road says the butchers at the end of the high street does the best pasties in Perimporth. So of course, we're going to the butchers. We're going to have a butchers at the butchers. Now I think the safe money is on the fact that we'll be in the watering hole for a large percentage of this evening listening to the tunes from the dunes.
I know what I'm doing. <laughs> I might look stupid, but I don't want to get sand in my new white socks. There's method to this madness. And this is deep sand. Yay! Today is going to be a good day. Thank you very much. That is a beauty. Talk of the beauties, look at this classic 1.9 GTI, late 80s hot hatch, ever. proper carport on this one. Good morning, guardy people. That was such a lovely atmosphere last night. Obviously there are now thousands of extra people in the village, in the town, for tunes in the dunes. And that was very evident on the beach last night with people coming and going from the festival as well as those that are just hanging out on the beach. Soaking up the vibe and the pub, the watering hole, that gets pretty busy. We're ending the day with a regular pasty, a dinosaur pasty, with the Ridgeback, which is best. This one? <laughs> Controversial. The Ridgeback pasty is better than the Cornish. What do you think? I ain't saying that on a Cornish video. I like them both. Devil's advocate. There's a few vans that have already left the paddock this morning around us, so they're after an early start. I think I'm gonna have to uh, tackle the coffee and tidy up the van a bit remnants that uh, need to go in the bin. And thank you to everyone who came and said hi yesterday evening. It was lovely meeting everyone. We were actually debating, since we've gotten lucky enough to get this spot in such a crowded location, is to maybe spend one more day, one more night. The sun is due to come out again today and given yesterday was the first real sense of summer, I shall be so bold to say, It'll be nice to stay around and, um, and soak that up a little bit more as well. Now it's not all perfection being on this little site, oh no. The inevitable seagull shite all over the van in the morning. <laughs> Hello Mike. <laughs> morning, morning, morning. Yesterday we walked past this, it's actually like a skate and surf shop, which we were curious to look at in the window. But what we also noticed in this skate and surf shop are these cakes. Obviously drawn in initially by the brownies, but they had a real good selection of blondies, which we we're going to go for. But, oh, that's the one we we're after. But the Bakewell ones actually come with a best part of a Bakewell tart within the blondie. So there's a few here that we might get just to try. What do we call them? Samples. 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 All right, so look at these. That is a white chocolate blondie. Oh, it's Matey Boy. Who's, who was that cowboy? He used to be on the white chocolate. Milky Bar Kid. The Milky Bar Kid, remember them? And then that's a Kinder one. And they are so heavy. What you're not gonna appreciate is the weight. So therefore the gooiness and the goodness of these. And then, talking of weight, pasties down here, pasties down here weigh, well, 
kind of like a good few pounds. <laughs> Just loving life at the moment. Look at that. Wicked. That's seriously perfect. That's it? That's so good. Don't know about anybody else, but I like my pastry probably a, a moment undercooked rather than overcooked. So I asked for the lightest pastry, the blondest one, the least cooked, and it is soft to perfection. They've nailed it, this one. The trouble is I don't even hear him panting, but Blue wants some of this. Right away through. Yeah. How good is that? And for a walk to go to the beach. <laughs> Come on then. Good boy. Ooh, good job. Let's go daddy out. the end of another wicked night and what we fancy chip buddies so fresh bread chips from the co-op around the corner we'll make them ourselves there's queues galore every food outlet in this town every pub every drinking spot everything is just ramoed our park up is next to where all the bands are for this festival so all the bands the roadies everything all the big rigs everything is in the uh, car park next to us and what's funny <laughs> me and nicky we can walk in and out of that place because I think they think we're airy band people. <laughs> we're getting all the way. They just think, oh, they're in a the band. They just don't even question it. Security ain't question it. So let me put in a picture of us near the band's flash rigs. You know, we're doing band life, they're doing coach life. So let's cut that in here. Who's a geezer from Reef? Um, Gary Stringer. A couple of people asked me tonight if I'm Gary from Reef and he walked past me and said, oh, it's, it's from Reef. <laughs> I ain't. So, that's how you end the night. Chip buddies. Oh, it's that final pack down and check. It's always sad, this bit. Coffee. Special thanks to this week's channel supporters who did buy us a coffee and your stickers are on their way out. Yes. Here's your name is running underneath. Cheers guys, you're the best. Thank you.